Okay. This is an interview at the New York State Military Museum, Saratoga Springs, New York. It is the 29th of October, 2004, approximately 10 a.m. Interviewers are Wayne Clark and Mike Russert. Could you give me your full name, date of birth, and place of birth, please? I'm Arthur T. Robinson. It's at, uh, 47 Granite Street, Saratoga Springs, New York. And Where and when were you born? I was born September 15, 1922, down in Boston, Spowell, Citadel Hospital. I was living in Boston at that time. Well, my mother was. And so. Okay. Uh, what was your educational background prior to entering service? I was in uh, Citadel High School from 38 to 40. Then I. My mother wouldn't sign the papers to, for me to go into service, so I, uh, day after I was born, uh, uh, 18, I signed up, so. Now, why did you decide to sign up for the Army? Well, my uncle, David Stewart, he was, uh, getting ready to get, he was uh, already signed up, and I went along to help protect him, or him, he would protect me, and, uh, just uh, wanted to go to service, I guess. Mm -hmm. Why did you pick the Army? I mean, just because your uncle was going in? Or? Uh, was National Guard is right here National in town, Guard, so okay. I went with them. And, uh, oh, you were part of the National Guard, too? Yeah. Okay. So here's, um, here's this paper here. Did you see that paper? I, I did see it, yes. Do you yeah. want to hold that up and I'll just focus in on it? This is uh, right up above about the soldiers getting in the train wreck and set over. Oh yes, yeah, I, re I heard about that. Yeah. Now, were you involved in that at all, or was well, that, I was that on, I was on a train when they when they hit, but mm -hmm. didn't do uh, us any damage. It's just the uh, women and kids on the track that got killed. Okay, mm -hmm. I got it. Now, was that when you uh, were leaving for maneuvers? No, I was leaving for Fort McClellan, Alabama. Okay, for maneuvers? No, well, was for, that just for a year of service. Oh, okay. We signed okay. up for a year and we got stuck for five years. You can, okay. you can set that down. Now, that was uh, when you first en enlisted? Yeah, I went right, right from, uh, from here to all of Alabama and we stayed down there a year. Okay. What, what was this armory like when, when you came in here to uh, to enlist? Is this where you enlisted at this armory? Yes. What was it like here? Oh, I don't know. It was upstairs, upstairs barracks like where, we, where they stayed, but they changed the positions and um, petitions everything in there now. Mm -hmm. It's a lot different. Was there a lot of activity here, a lot of people coming and going? Well, there, there are quite a few soldiers in here, you know. Uh-huh. There's about 110 of us when we left, but there wasn't that many coming back. Mm -hmm. um, tell us about, so you went, did you march to the train station from here? I think we did, mm -hmm. yeah. So then you got uh, on the... The station was only right up here on Church Street. Mm -hmm. Top of the hill. Mm -hmm. you know? The railroad used to go right through where the price chopper is now. So when you got on the trains, were you aware that there had been an accident and people were killed? Well, we've uh, heard people screaming and everything. Mm -hmm. So uh, we knew something had happened. And then they come in and told us what was going on. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, now you went to uh, Alabama. Could you tell us about going down to Fort McClellan? No, we, we got down there and with the snakes and rattlesnakes there and uh, poison oak. It was just an open uh, woodlot, more or less. We made barracks uh, 12 by 12 and they held six people each here for the bunks. And, uh, it was just that gooey mud stick to your shoes, and it was a uh, wasn't much to to the place. <laughs> but there, when we left, there was all black top, and we had 
about the same kind of barracks, but uh, we had the uh, crust stone all down through the driveways and everything. So, oh, was this the first time you'd really been away from home? Yes, yes. Were you ever homesick? No. No, your no. uncle was your uncle with you? Yeah, at, the, at that time, yeah. Mm -hmm. But he was transferred to the 25th Division before we left Fort McLeod. There was what a whole were, bunch of them left, you know, went to the 25th. Mm -hmm. What were the maneuvers like in, in the South? With the well, heat? They, they were uh, almost as bad as the action that we saw in Saipan and stuff. You know? Now, you I mentioned. Got, I got captured down there by the Reds. <laughs> down there. <laughs> Down on maneuvers, but mm -hmm. Japanese never caught me. How did you get along with the civilians down there? We get along good, but well, when we first went down in October, they hadn't snowed down there for 21 years, and it snowed 21 inches that that one year, and they said Yankees go back home. <laughs> <laughs> now this was October of 1940 that you yeah. went down there. Um, You, was this where that hand grenade accident happened? Well, it was in Tennessee maneuver. Could you tell us about that? Well, it wasn't much to, uh, to say about that too much, but... Well, you described yeah. it before. Could you tell me the story of how it happened? I was uh, throwing the grenades uh, getting to, just to get rid of them. Because we were getting ready to go off the maneuvers, you know, and I didn't want to take them back to camp. So we were throwing them over the snow, and Virgil Collins, he threw, uh, threw a grenade over, and it hit the top of the mountain and rolled back down the hill towards us, and uh, I picked it up and threw it over the knoll. And just as it got up over the top of the knoll, it uh, went off. And we had dynamite that we put, a, they had them in these bags, like wrap them around the tree, and we set them off with an automobile battery. And that tree come down, and uh, all the stuff come right back where the Jeep was. We are uh, quite a ways away from the, where it exploded, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but the debris come right back down to, uh, to us, you know. Uh -huh. Okay, after you left uh, Fort McClellan, where did you go? We went to Camp Han, uh, Camp Han California. Then we uh, the March Field was right there beside it. Now, when you then were we, then we went from there north to um, Port Ord, and uh, the Seventh Cavalry was uh, stationed right alongside of us there. Um, I meant to ask, when you were at McClellan, what kind of guns were you using? Were you using the O3s? Oh, the M1. Oh, you had M1s. Yeah, we had M1s. And now did you have the World War I type helmets, or? No, we had, you had yeah, World War I helmet, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It wasn't no helmet, it was a hat. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, what unit were you assigned to? You were in the 27th Division. What was your regiment and company? I was in Company L for a while, then they uh, transferred me to the 3rd Battalion Headquarters. That's the head of the Milk Battalion, M-I-L-N-K. And, uh, what did that stand for, do you remember? M-I-L-N-K? Yeah, M Company and yeah, I, and the L company. and the K. Okay. M Company was from Johnstown, and L Company was here, and I was in Mon Monroe, and the K Company was from Lens Falls. I was reading in the paper the other day where the, uh, they were looking for a steel Michael Barefoot from Company K, but of course he may be from California or any place, but, mm -hmm. but they couldn't locate him. Because mm -hmm. I've been looking at that American Legion every uh, month. We get, I, I joined them, you know, so they mm -hmm. send me the uh, books. And I looked at every... Uh, Every time for somebody from my outfit. And that's the only one I've seen since uh, I got out of service. Hmm. Or since I own the 
American, it was in the American Legion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, what, where did you go after Fort Ord? We went down to Ord, Hawaii. Mm -hmm. now, the Japan, Japanese attack there in December. Now, wh where were you? We got over there in about May, I guess, to okay. April. Where were you when you heard about Pearl Harbor? California. Mm -hmm. what, what was your reaction when you heard about that? I was getting ready to come home on a furlough and uh, they canceled our furlough so we got mad at the Japs right off the bat. <laughs> was your year almost up? Uh, your, my, your, your my one year enlistment? Yeah. Oh yeah. And so you were involuntarily Anybody, anybody 35 or 38 or something like that, they got them out, uh, you know, they they didn't go into war. Mm -hmm. so, there's uh, Frank Burton in here. He's one of the guys that got, that got out. Jonesy, he was in our outfit before we left. Remember the mayor? Oh, okay. Yeah. And uh, he made sergeant before he got off the train. Mm -hmm. Somebody had to be a non-commissioned officer, you know. Uh -huh. I was acting sergeant most of the time, but they never gave me pay for it. <laughs> now he, this is Ellsworth Jones. He ended up going to the, an airborne unit then. He yeah, he unit. wound up with 101st or something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, we did an interview of him. Yeah, um, he was a pretty good sergeant. Mm -hmm. Now, what did you do in Cal in Hawaii, and how long were you there? No. Oh. We were there until they, uh, they uh, decided to go and attack them, get down making making that tall. I was on a machine gun going in there on the alligator. Mm -hmm. You went in on alligators? Yeah. And uh, Arthur Britton, he was from Connecticut on the other tank. He got shot through the head before he got off the off the map. So. What was it? Were you in the first wave going in? I was uh, pretty close to it mm -hmm. uh, all together, you know. Mm -hmm. D Country Company, they went in, and when they got halfway in there, they, they got shot in the back because the Japanese come up out of these holes and uh, got them from the back, you know. What was it like as you went into the beach? Was it on fu under fire? No, it didn't seem to be. Mm -hmm. But they, they had a um, the United States, uh, the Japanese Imperial Marines was there, and they were six foot or better. And uh, I guess they, they just got caught there b before the war, you know, so. Mm -hmm. So we got them. And I got on shore, I went off to the right, and uh, everybody said, where's Robbie, where's Robbie? And, I never realized how much uh, people like me, you know. Mm -hmm. So you, your alligator kind of drifted over toward the right then? No, I... I oh, you the, yourself? Yeah. You. Okay. No, the alligator, they were right in there straight. Mm -hmm. So how, how were but, the Japanese Marines? Were they pretty tough fighters? They were pretty tough, yeah. Uh -huh. But like I said, in the thing of the, their, their equipment wasn't as good as ours. No, uh, M16, I wouldn't uh, give them powder to blow them, whatever you want to call it. Because mm -hmm. uh, Japanese, they kept coming right at us for them, but the M1, they never come, come by us. Mm -hmm. So you carried an M1 during the whole war? Yes. And you found it very reliable? Weapon? Yeah, it was the best thing I ever had. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How long were you in Macon? Uh, not too long. Got in and out. In Saipan, when I got we got there, uh, I wasn't in there before, long before I got wounded. Mm -hmm. From June to July. Where were you in between Macon and Saipan? We went right from uh, Macon to Saipan. Oh, you did? Yeah. Uh-huh. 
Um, were you in the first landings on Saipan? No, they held me back on the ship for a while mm -hmm. on Saipan. So I uh, didn't get that much of a action in there, you know. Mm -hmm. Only action I got was when I got wounded. That was about 15 or 16 days later or better, you know. Do you want to tell us about that? Well, do you think the fighting was, um, there was more fighting on Saipan than Macon? Oh, yeah. Because mm -hmm. Saipan was a lot bigger island. Yes, there. right. And there were 4,200 Japs there. Mm -hmm. That's what got killed anyhow. There might have been more than that because but we, um, our outfit never took too many prisoners. It took four men a night to guard them, and we didn't want to guard anybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How did you get wounded? Could you describe what happened? I well, we was on patrol after a sniper and uh, the lieutenant was on my left and he got killed and the Sergeant Berger Collins, he was on my right and he got shot in the pelvis bone. Made his legs two inches shorter. And John Zapka was on the right of him and he got he was kneeling down and he got shot right through there and it went on down to to his heart. And uh, we we just went to get that sniper, but it turned out to be 200 of them there, and G Company Kate got them the next day, went after them. Is that who shot you as the sniper? Sniper. It was supposed to have been a sniper, but there were 200 of them up in there. Mm -hmm. But we, we at the time we didn't know it. Mm -hmm. So you were shot through both legs. Yes. The upper or lower leg? Right in through here, and down here, and in there, and out there. Mm -hmm. You put your fist in my side there where it come out at what, the time. Was it one bullet that went through both yeah, legs? Yeah, machine gun. Because then the rest of the bullets went pitted the pattern right along beside my head. Mm -hmm. so. Were you treated on where you were hit? Did someone drag you out or did... Oh, Joe. John Max Payne, he, he got me out of there and put me up on a duck and I went uh, back down to the, where the medical uh, company was and they treated me there. We went down, they put, my, put me and Virgil both on a, on a jeep, on the back end of the jeep laying this way. No guns or nothing with us. Going down this track about 12 miles bumpy bump 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 all the way, you know, because the railroad ties. And because that probably be the only safest place to go is on the railroad track, because otherwise you get blown up on a road with uh, landmines or something. So got down down there twelve miles away and uh got an easier pup tents. Now we got uh, on the plane, went to back to Hawaii. Was there for a month in the 13th, uh, 13th replacement. I was in the in the hospital for about a month. But then we ended up in 13th replacement center. Then we later on, I was transferred back to uh, New Hebrides, uh, out of north northwest of Australia. And that was a navy, navy port. And then we went from there to Okinawa. And then a lieutenant on uh, my leading us through this here wooded area. He got killed right through the head, through uh, Japanese. And, uh, I was the next guy in line, and uh, I was scared to go across that opening in a wall with a stone wall and then mm -hmm. a path going through it. And so then we, as we all got through there, we uh, turned around and we said, let's get the heck out of here. There was four men on a stretcher carrying this lieutenant out. And finally I said, "You, uh, 
one guy in the front and one guy get off get off the back. No, and this other guy was carrying the lieutenant out. We laid him down in the field with a stretcher and dragged it, dragged out of there. We didn't know how many Japs was in there, but there were quite a few, I guess, according to what they shot in the paper, you know, was uh, mm -hmm. right up about them. Mm -hmm. We hit the shores of uh, Okinawa, there wasn't too much uh, going on, but in the night time, see if you uh, flip your socks out, the uh, blue crabs would take your socks away. Oh, they were big ones, so they were sand crabs, but they were, I don't know if they came out of the ocean or out of the land, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, Did you suffer any kind of uh, tropical diseases? Like malaria or anything like that? No, I didn't know. My uncle, he did, David Stewart, he, he got malaria. He went down to New South, South Carolina, uh, South, um, uh, I can't think of the name now. now how long were you in Okinawa? It's been a month or more. Mm -hmm. we, did, we did have uh, some Jap prisoners on that island. And the native girls, they, they were good. All the natives were as good as far as that goes. It was right in the school schoolyard where we was uh, bivouacking there. What did you have for food? Just K rations and C rations? We had uh, K rations. They they were wasn't too bad. Mm -hmm. They were better than the C rations, but a lot of a lot of guys preferred the C rations. The K rations had them packages. Uh, I don't know. Enough to feed, uh, I think, it was about ten men or so in them. And the chocolate bar in there, I like them. Mm -hmm. But a lot of guys didn't like them, and they give them to me. <laughs> Out of the three actions you were in, Macon, uh, Saipan, and Okinawa, which do you think was the the worst? No, Saipan, I, I would say, you know. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like more men around you and yourself were yeah. either killed or wounded there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Were you there during the uh, typhoon? No, there didn't seem to be having any wind or nothing there. Mm -hmm. What did you think when you heard about the dropping of the atomic bombs? Mm -hmm. I don't, wouldn't know. Mm -hmm. Did you hear? Uh, I was home when they, that happened. Okay, you were discharged by then? Yeah, September, September 9th or September 7th I got discharged. 9th I guess it was. Mm -hmm. Do you remember, uh, were you home when you heard about the death of President Roosevelt? Yes. How did, how did you feel about that? Well, I, I don't uh, recall how I did feel. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, where were you discharged? Fort Dix. Mm -hmm. you know. Did you ever uh, see any USO shows while you were overseas? Oh yeah. Could you? Yeah. Do you remember any of the stars that you saw? Yeah, uh, Gloria De Havilland. Did you see Bob Hope? Bob Hope. Yeah, they, they were good mural builders. I was watching a movie there one night, and the Japanese bombs, uh, planes came over and dropped the bombs, but the bombs landed in the bay instead of on a theater. After
after you were discharged, did you make use of a, a GI Bill at all? Yeah, two weeks. I drew uh, $20 a week oh, the there. the 5220 Club, yeah, okay. two weeks. I said, yeah, there ain't money enough for me, so I went out and worked, started working. Mm -hmm. Now, I know you said you joined veterans. Did you join veterans organizations? Yeah. The uh, Foreign American Legion, that's the only one I joined. Mm -hmm. Are you active at all in it? Do you still belong to it? I still belong to it, but I don't participate in anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. Do you ever stay in contact with anyone that was in the service with you? No. That, well, there's a few people here left in town that mm -hmm. I see there once in a while. Roger Gaynor. But he was only with us for a year, and I don't know where he, he wound up over in Hawaii someplace, but I don't know where about. Mm -hmm. He had married a girl over there, and she died here about a month or so ago. She was from Hawaii. How do you think your time in the service had an effect on your life? Well, it, I, I just went along to uh, experience, and I don't think it affected me any, because I got out when I was 25, mm -hmm. or 23, so and I never figured to be living this long. Mm -hmm. Do, you, do your wounds ever bother you? Yes, I've been trying to get some more money from them, but... Uh, they uh, said it's nothing but arthritis or whatever. It's not affected from the gun wound, so mm -hmm. I do get 20%, 10% for each leg. But one doctor down at the VA, I've been going down there since '86. He said I should have gotten more money right from the beginning, mm -hmm. but I tried to get some a couple months ago. And they ejected me, so. Um, do you have some pictures you want to show us? There's uh, some in here. Here's a, you want to hold that one up? This is one that they wanted uh, me to uh, bring in and leave mm -hmm. it here, I guess. Well, you, you don't have to. No, we don't want you to leave it here. That's no. Where and when was that taken? Do you remember? 1940. Well, that was... That was in the fall of 1940 because we got the cattle up. Wool uh, uniform on, you know. Mm -hmm. The rest of the time we was in the heat, so we didn't need them. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any other pictures you want to show us, or you got, you got this here? Yep. We, yes. Did you want to look at that? I, yeah, I'd like to make. Actually, a copy yeah, of we'll we'll make a copy of that. A copy of your photograph. There's a bunch of wedding girls. There's another picture of me there. Okay, where was that taken? Mm, probably in Hawaii there someplace. Okay. They got khaki's uh, uniform on. Yeah. There's uh, some of the soldiers with me. This one here is Berger Collins. And this guy, I haven't looked up in a book to find out what, what his name was, but these here is Joe Bezo, uh, Barozo, uh, John Ortega, and Monty uh, Montez. They were all from California, St. Barbara or somewhere around there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got a fight with this guy here and another guy at the same time over in o Okinawa. <laughs> What were you fighting about? Well, we just getting arguments, you know. Uh -huh. But I didn't, I didn't, uh, wasn't afraid of too many people, you know. <laughs> That's a good snapshot. <laughs> A 
think that's about it. it on the picture. They even got a breakdown on the M1 and the O3 and the, the Browning Automatic. Oh, the AR, yeah. Uh, they have a King, King Camille of, of uh, Hawaii. Mm -hmm. so. We had a Japanese up in the trees and a uh, guy from, from our outfit that he was from the anti-tank company attached to us. Him and his crew got all killed. He made the uh, lieutenant in the field, Bill Freeman. And, uh, but the rest of them got a, a Japanese uh, threw a grenade over that wall I was talking about on Okinawa there and he got killed. They all got killed, the whole four of them there that run their anti-tank gun. This one Japanese sniper was up in the tree there and he ate the late, buried the anti-tank gun and shot a canister show, show up into it. And, Took the top of that tree right off and the Japanese with it. <laughs> okay, well, they thank were, oh, were, you. Yeah. Another story? Huh? I thought you had another story you were going to no. tell. Okay. No. Well, thank you very much for your interview. Yeah.